Should you still pay $95 a year for the Chase Sapphire Preferred card? To some of you, paying an annual fee for a credit card is nothing new. Maybe you're already paying much more annual fees for your credit card like the American Express Platinum card. But to most of you, just an annual fee for a credit card is enough to scare people off. But I promise you that after watching this video, you'll want to give it a second thought because we'll be going over all the key benefits of the Chase Sapphire Preferred as well as my thoughts and experience using them. And then also break down the value I get from this card, which spoiler alert is much more than a $95 of annual fee. Hey, I'm Kevin and on this channel, we talk strategies to help you along on your financial journey. If you love credit card perks as much as I do, let me know by smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get right into it. So the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, which I'll just call the CSP, is one of my oldest credit cards, which has been in my wallet for almost four years now, but I still recommend it for anyone's credit card arsenal, especially with a sign-up bonus right now of 80,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points and a $50 grocery credit, which is much more than what I got when I signed up, which was 50 or 60K points. Right off the bat, the $50 of grocery credit already covers more than half of your annual fee, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. In my opinion, the Chase Ultimate Reward Point System is one of the two most valuable credit card points in the industry, the other one being the American Express Membership Reward Points. At a very bare minimum, you'll want to value these points at one cent a point, giving the sign-up bonus a valuation of $800. But you could actually redeem these points using the pay yourself back feature, which lets you redeem these points at a 25% increase of value, meaning a 1.25 times value on things like groceries, restaurants, takeout, delivery, home improvement, and more. That makes your 80K signup bonus be valued at $1,000. Personally, I value my points at about two cents a point, which I'd say is kind of conservative because I'm hoping to use these points to transfer to one of the 10 plus different airlines and hotel partners they have that you can transfer points to and then find redemptions that'll get you at least two cents of value for either airfare or hotel stays. For example, you can transfer these chase points over to the Virgin Atlantic program, which also partners with the ANA airline, which is a five-star airline based in Japan. Looking at the chart, you can book round trip flights from the Western US over to Japan for 90,000 points in business class or 110,000 points in first class. That means with the sign up bonus alone, you're almost covering a round trip ticket from Western US to Japan already. At over $6,000 USD for a flight like this, you'll be valuing your points at almost seven cents a point. Of course, this values depending on how much you would have paid for this flight, but I think that makes my two cent valuation pretty reasonable. With all that said, did I mention that the annual fee is only $95 and you're already getting all these perks? What if I said there's a chance you could even get this $95 waived? Well, you might be able to, because there's a lot of data points showing that if you apply for this card in branch, you can actually get the first year annual fee waived. In that case, it's an absolute no brainer for the card because you can then either cancel the card after a year or downgrade to no annual fee cards like the Chase Freedom cards. With all these perks now, I wish I could apply for this card all over again because the downside is that they only let you claim a bonus for a Sapphire based card, the other one being the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, once every four years. Unfortunately, I would know because back when I got the CSP card, there was no restriction. And then when it came to about a year or two later and I was about to apply for the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, they introduced a two year gap rule. And then when two years approach, they change it to a four year gap rule. So I'm still waiting. With that out of the way, what does this card get you? I'd say it's a pretty solid card for even everyday typical spend. It's not mind blowing, but it still holds its ground pretty well. First, you get two times points on anything dining related worldwide. Combine that with a 0% foreign transaction fee, that makes this card a card you'd wanna use internationally as well. The nice part about this card is that it works for delivery and takeout as well, which has been pretty handy the last year. At my valuation of two cents a point, this is basically giving me 4% back on my purchases in dining. On top of that, you get two times points on everything travel. Now, I couldn't really find an official list of what travel means in this case, but I did find this list on the Points Guide blog, which says that it covers things from airline and hotel lodging to trains, cruise lines, buses, taxis, and more. Again, with the two times points and two cents a point, I treat this as 4% back. Then on top of that, 
you get a total of five times points on your lift rides because you get three extra points on top of the original two you get for the travel category. Then you get one times points on everything else you spend. So depending on how you spend on this card, you can pretty much get a few percent back on everything you're buying. If you want to know how I'm able to save and get a percentage discount on basically everything I buy, check out a video I made on that topic up in the top right corner. Before we get into the more lesser known perks, let's take a look at the other couple major benefits of this card. Especially in the last year, a lot of people have been ordering from services like DoorDash and Uber Eats. If you watch my video on the American Express Platinum card, you'll know that that card gives me Uber Eats Pass which gets me $0 delivery as well as a reduction in service charge. Well, on the Chase Sci-Fi Preferred card, I actually get the equivalent on DoorDash and Caviar, which is called the Dash Pass. Dash Pass usually costs about $10 a month or $120 a year, but I order enough from the service to actually get the full value out of this perk. Then maybe with all that food, you want to get more exercise. Well, this card gets you five times points back on all your Peloton purchases. And at two cents a point of my valuation, that's basically like 10% back on all Peloton purchases. Then on top of that, you also get $60 towards Peloton memberships. All right, so onto the perks that people usually glance over because it's in the more finer print at the bottom, but can be pretty useful. The first bucket of these benefits would be for travel where the main one is how you can transfer these chase points over to their 10 plus partners and redeem for either flights or hotel stays at two cents, six cents, or even more value for your points. On top of that, you get things like travel cancellation and interruption insurance, where if you are sick, injured, have jury duty, or severe weather canceling your trip, Chase will reimburse you up to $5,000 per trip or up to $20,000 per year. Of course, we hope that none of this is ever needed, but just by having this is a pretty good peace of mind. It's also nice that this card covers you for essentials if there's a delay in your luggage by six hours or more for up to $100 a day, up to five days. Surprisingly, luggage gets delayed or lost a lot in the United States, so this is also a pretty good perk to have. Then there's trip delay insurance, where it covers you for delays of over 12 hours, up to $500 per ticket. I don't know why it's the case, but again, for flights around the US, delays happen all the time. Then lastly, in the travel bucket, would be the primary car rental insurance. You'll still need to pay for the liability insurance, but at least you'll be able to save the $20 to $30 for the car rental insurance. Now, what if you're not a travel person? Well, this card has amazing benefits for you too. First off, if you bought an item on the card that has manufacturer's warranty for three years or less, then the Chase card will automatically give you an additional year of manufacturer warranty. Now, I haven't had to use this yet, but knowing that you get an extra year on electronics and expensive things like an iPad is pretty nice. And this covers up to $10,000, so the ceiling for this is pretty high as well. Then you have purchase protection that covers things that have been damaged, stolen, or accidentally lost within the first 120 days of you buying it. And of course, you have to actually have bought the item with the card. A friend of mine had to go through this process where he lost his AirPods soon after buying it and was able to get it reimbursed. And the whole process was pretty simple. With a max claim of $500 an item or up to $50,000 an account, it's pretty nice to know that you have this coverage on basically everything you're buying. Finally, there's a couple other ways that you can save on things you buy regularly as well. Throughout the years, you can usually find offers that will give you $10 or $20 off your Amazon purchases just by using Chase Points. Now, I don't recommend you using Chase Points to pay for your entire order, but the nice part about this is that you can just use one point to cover one cent of your purchase and pay for the rest of your purchase using regular means, like the same credit card, and still get the whole benefit. Then there's also a lot of small cashback offers on your credit card, but you'll have to actually manually go in and activate these. Most of these aren't offers I'd use all the time, but things like Amazon Fresh and Whole Foods, Disney Plus, and a couple others could come in handy. Lastly, if you watch my video on the American Express Platinum card, then this is not new to you. If you feel like you're not getting the full value out of this card, you can call into the Chase Retention Department and explain your case in hopes for them giving you an offer in order to keep the card. Now, Chase doesn't seem like they do a lot of retentions because I couldn't find that many data points on this, but out of the ones that did, they got offered about $60 in order to keep the card, 
which doesn't really cover the full year of the card, but is better than nothing. So with all that said, what's an estimate on how much I'm able to get of value from this card? Well, first, I make pretty good value from the DoorDash credit, which is a value of $120 a year. Then through regular Amazon and Chase portal offers, I can usually get about $30 a year on that. That alone is already $150 a year, which is more than the $95 a year I pay on the annual fee. And that's not even including the current 80,000 point signup bonus, where if you take a very conservative 1.25 times point value, that's already $1,000 back in your pocket which you can also think of it as covering 10 years of the annual fee. Add on the $50 in grocery credit, the $60 Peloton credit, the warranty extensions, purchase protections, travel protections, and the basic multipliers on this card. All of that makes up for a pretty compelling card that I keep in my wallet permanently and it could have a room in yours as well. If this interests you at all, I'll have links down below to see if you qualify and sign up for this card. Hey, thanks for watching this all the way through. If you wanna know how I'm able to get over $2,000 of value from another premium credit card, check out a video I made on that with links down below. And if you wanna know how I'm able to save and get a discount on basically everything I buy, there's also a video down there as well. I hope this opens the door to see that paying annual fees on credit cards may not necessarily be a bad thing and could be really good if you can make use of the benefits and rewards you get. Anyways, thanks for watching and as always, invest safe, spend safe, and see you in the next one.